Hi everyone, Melissa Miller here with Melissa's Motifs. Today we're going to be learning how to glue our pieces down for our mosaic and I'm going to be using the pieces that I demonstrated yesterday in my cutting video. I'm starting my mosaic here and I'm using mastic or tile adhesive. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can take your mosaic pieces and butter each one and glue it down like so just enough so that a little is coming in through the bottom there however the way I do it is I set down big globs of it over part of the surface, like so. And I'm gonna be using some bigger pieces, so I'm gonna put down a pretty thick coat here. And then I'm gonna be sure and cover this because I don't want the air to get to it for very long. At the point where this mastic starts developing a skin over it, it's not usable. It won't adhere. So I usually start in the middle, actually. I haven't done this for a while. I have actually have, I've had to give up my mosaic craft because of a strange illness that I developed, a blood infection a couple of years ago that rendered me bedridden for about two years and I ended up with some really bad nerve pain. So I had to give it up and that's one reason why I'm doing this vid these videos because I want to make sure that I do what I can to pass this skill on to others because it's such a beautiful craft and you hear people say well anyone can do that and then it turns out that well I can't do it I'm gonna I've got a lot of these flowers to use so I'm gonna do a little floral centerpiece there. This stem was too long, so I'm going to shorten it. Now this is a piece of MDF wood. And MDF wood, the beauty of it is that it does not have to be sealed before you mosaic on it. I'm actually going to put a little bird here. have some construction work going on next door. Okay, and then I'm going to use some, this is gonna be mostly pink and green, although I'll probably be adding more. This necklace that I was wearing, I tore off one strand of it so I could get at these beautiful beads. And I'm gonna set these in here in different places. Okay, I found this green candle holder inside and I want some green and I can't find my leaves so I'm gonna incorporate this into it. I love the sheen of this. This was another thrift sale find, 49 cents. I never plan my pieces out in advance. I just sort of I throw some shards together and I just sort of let the mosaic tell me 
direct me to my design. More of this beautiful green from yesterday's work. Now remember I said that you can either use these rims all in one piece or you can cut them up and use them in smaller pieces. In this case, I'm going to do both. I'm going to put some down there. I'll wipe the mastic off the sides. The problem with this technique is that I'm going to have to go in here and push this mastic down because there needs to be room between the shards for the grout to sink in. Here's some of my beautiful crockery. I'm using these thicker pieces to hold my sculptural elements in place a little bit better. I always start out thinking I'm going to use just certain colors and then it almost always ends up being a matter of I'm using every color. These are some beads that came off a necklace. I have a personal dislike of getting any mastic on my hands, but I don't want to wear gloves because I want to be able to do this fine work. So I just keep a bunch of paper towels next to me. Here's some of that blue that I love from that little donkey cart that I cut up in my other video. I had drilled two holes in this because I planned to use it as a hanging wall piece. I'll just thread a ribbon through there and nothing fancy. You can even actually do both. You can put some down, and if you have a big curved piece, you can add some inside of it just to make sure that there's enough for it to get glued down there. And I like to put in some square pieces when I can.
This is a very meditative craft. These little leaf shape tiles come in handy for places where you don't know exactly what to do. We have a little wind picking up here. <clears throat> now the beauty of mastic is you can stick your thick pieces down and your thinner pieces leave them closer to the top so the surface is a little bit more even. This is very thin, so I'll use more mastic and not push it in quite as much. It's your own style, however you want to do this. I crowd my pieces together a whole lot, but you don't have to do it that way. You can have them spread farther apart. Here's some of this beautiful yellow from the donkey cart. Going to do some more angular cuts here to add some interest. I guess that crashing sound from next door can be the soundtrack to my Broken China Mosaic video. I'm going to have to remember to avoid those two holes. Or if they do get covered, I can go in there in a little bit and poke something through there to clear them out. Or I can just cover them up and set this in a stand instead of hanging it on a wall. I should mention that this is my first mosaic in over two years because of my illness, so I've lost a little bit of my snap. I found these beautiful tile pieces from another project that I did. They're a little bit translucent, but they work pretty well. And I can never resist putting a little bit of red into my pieces. Adds a little cheer to it. Okay, so I'm going to put some curved pieces here. You can be really messy with this craft. You don't have to be neat and tidy. That's one of the things I love about it because I'm a very messy person. Here's an interesting white dish. I love that texture. Actually, this is probably a good one to use my 
hammer on. It's already cracked, so. after all. You can use tweezers too if you have some little tiny bits. I'm going to put in a little crystal there just for a little brightness, a little sparkle. I'm a sparkle fanatic. I think that's going to be okay. Okay, I'm about ready to call this one done. And I have so much, there is so much mastic on here. The mastic is so thick that it's going to take a couple of days to dry before I grout it. So there we go. You can pick it up and clean off the edges in the back of it because inevitably mastic ends up on the back and globbed onto the sides. There are just so many things that you can do with this craft. And it's so enjoyable, especially working outdoors. In Iowa, we have a very short working outdoors period. Days to show you how to grout this. In the meantime, I need to decide what color I want to use for my grout. I would use either a light brown or sand color, or I would use white. So. I'm going to have to think about that. Thank you for watching, everyone.